Ryan's Mobile One. Bobby Moody reached out to me the other day. He had a question. He's in a situation that I've been in. Probably everybody that's ever done a Subaru timing belts run into I've had this question so many times, and that is cam slipped. Am I in trouble? What do I need to do from here? And the quick answer is you're not in trouble at all because Subaru uses different marks for doing the timing belt than they do for traditional timing. I'm going to show you exactly what that is right now. Even though this has an electronic ignition, it doesn't have a traditional uh, distributor like they used to have. All these new ones just have like a ignition coil up here. They still have the old marks. You can see that there's a little bit of a nick in the harmonic balancer and then you can see the zero and the mark. These are your traditional timing marks. So we're going to tear it down in this position that it's in and then look at the mark that we have for our timing belt. So get rid of this guy. So I've got rid of the cover but we still have these same marks. You still have that little nick there that's to go here. So I pull that off. And look at the keyway on this, it's to the right. But the marks for doing the rest of it are different than that. So in this position, this is the number one cylinder as it says number one right here. And the piston's all the way out, just like you see here. The protrusion that just fills up the space so that it can have better compression is sticking out like that. I took a harmonic balancer and I plasma cut it out from the rest and welded a 31 30 second socket on it because you never use that. And it's got yellow paint where the key is, red paint on the opposite side. So what we're going to do is turn it until the marks line up. You just go clockwise a quarter turn until the red one's up. When you have the red one up, then you can see the marks under here are lined up. So with those marks lined up, now we're ready to do a timing belt. Those are the timing belt marks. So you're just off 90 degrees between top dead center and the other. You can see that the pistons are pushed back in basically so that they're in the lowest position and that's on both sides. So the quick answer to your question is the pistons are out of the way so that they don't hit but how far out are the valves sticking and what are they like on the cylinder heads? Let's take a look at that. I've got a couple that are pulled off right now. So here's a cylinder head. This is from the driver's side. This is the one that flipped. Um, the furthest the valves are going to stick out is this. So the exhaust valves they're going to be sticking out this much on the back cylinder, cylinder 4, and on cylinder 2, the one in the front, because this has the variable timing with these solenoid sensors, all that kind of stuff, it has the other one in a little bit. So that one right there sticks out about 8 millimeters. There's an allowance of about 4 millimeters for the cut in on the piston. Let's look at what we've got going on with the rest of them. Exactly what is the clearance? So the way I'm measuring all of this is with a micrometer. If you don't have a micrometer, I'd recommend getting this one. It's better to buy it right the first time. I had to buy three of them in order to figure this out. So on the back side of this, you can see it's got this little middle piece. This enables you to measure in three direct, basically three things. And it's got the little wheel. You lose that on some of them. So you can measure inside of something with this. You can measure the outside with these, and you can measure the depth with this guy right here. You can use this to measure how deep the bore is, you know, what the uh, movement of the piston is, and we can determine where it's at in the cylinder. So we talked about top dead center, bottom dead center. What does KMS stand for? That's something that I came up with, so don't feel bad if you don't know. KMS is kind of mid-stroke. And the reason why I say kind of mid-stroke is if you have your marks exactly on these marks right here, then what you'll find here with your measurements is that it's going to be 47 millimeters deep on the front two, that's one and two, and then 45 millimeters deep on the others. So the actual half stroke is 46 millimeters, but when your timing marks are lined up just right for the timing belt, for the pulleys and grooves, everything to be just right, these are what your measurements are going to be. So that's a lot of room. Um, these stick out about three to four millimeters depending on how much carbon's on them and then that little horn, the little indentation. And then there's a dent that allows for, and the head gasket is actually one millimeter thick. But because you have 46.8, I rounded to 47, but because you have that much difference, um, there's no way that it's gonna hit. 
so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, do you rotate it clockwise, counterclockwise? Doesn't matter. You have all the room in the world. Nothing's linked up. And when the valves are opening and closing with this big amount of space here, it's going to be fine. Once this timing mark is in this position, the world is your oyster for cam movement as long as it doesn't move. However, it's not the other way around. You can't get away with moving the crank or you can hit valves. Clear? Sweet. So as far as the keyway, you can tell where you're at on the keyway. This is what it's like when you're putting the timing belt on. When it's down, you can let your guard down. When the woodruff key in the end of the crank that the uh, harmonic balancer lines up with, when that's pointing down, let your guard down. You can rotate it any direction you want. It's not going to hurt anything because all the pistons are as far in. When they go out, the front two go out while the back two go in. And then when the back two come out, the front two are going in. So when the cross paths in the middle and these are coming out and these are going in, boop, right there at the bottom there. When it's at the left, you're at bottom dead center on cylinder number one. When it's all the way to the right, you're at top dead center on cylinder number one and cylinder number two because they go together. If you're at top dead center with these to the right, then the other two are going to be at top dead center, three and four, when it's the other way. Three and four are at top dead center when these are at bottom dead center. So I'm making it harder than it needs to be, but I'm throwing this information in there. Why? Because it's just nice to know all of this kind of stuff if you're doing anything else. I like to be able to read where things are from these things, so that's why I threw them in there. Sometimes when I make a video like this, it's because I want to be able to refer to it later for my own benefit. And if it can benefit me, then it can probably benefit anybody else too. Thanks to Bobby Moody for asking the question. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. You can follow me on social media, either on Instagram or on Facebook. Obviously, this was a Facebook question, and uh, that's where you got a hold of me. I can't answer everybody's questions, but I try to do the best I can. This one's been asked a lot. It's a good time to make a video about it because I've got an engine that's already torn down sitting here. Perfect. If you want to take control of your YouTube feed and not be led by clickbait to clickbait, you can click subscribe and then hit the bell to be notified. And sometimes they will even send you those uh, notifications. I think once it's not an election year, things will be a little bit more sane and we'll have a little bit more control. But until then, do what you can, right? Bonus footage at the end. In the great state of Utah, we have a shortage of mule deer and a plethora of coyotes. And this brush here is where a lot of the does will hang out with their fawns and the coyotes eat the fawns. So do you like coyotes or do you like deer? Well, whatever the case may be, you get paid 50 bucks to remove coyotes and you get fined if you remove deer out of season and without a tag. So anyway, let's chase some coyotes. get down real close to these things where I could just about put my feet on their backs and then I had one of them flip around and see this watch this right this going through that brush he swiped at a couple of jackrabbits They're, they are feisty like they are just on a whole nother level it's like a jackrabbit versus a pet rabbit I mean they're dogs but they're just on a whole nother lizard brain kind of level 